Hey, it's me again. I'm just an amateur hobbyist, and I love making props and stuff. And in this video I'm testing out 3D printing with clay sculpting. If you're curious about this, keep watching and I'll show you how. Yes, finally. I've wanted a 3D printer for my hobby room since forever. So I'm super happy to finally have one. And if you're anything like me, you've kept it running 24-7 since unboxing it. And like everyone else, I have printed out tons of cool stuff which I've found on places like Thingiverse. And of course, I've used Fusion 360 and made some brackets and tool holders for my workstations. But now I wanted to try something different. So I started by downloading this awesome Fallout Deathclaw model on Thingiverse, which I have put a link down to in my description. The 3D artist who made this is obviously very talented, because it had lots of details and looked really great. So I could easily left the model as is and painted it. But I wanted to take it further. And since I'm not skilled at 3D modeling, clay seemed like a good option. In fact, clay is the perfect option to make something look like bones. I have used clay as a medium of sculpting models before, so I was confident I could sharpen the edges, add some more body to it, get rid of those annoying print lines, and make it look more like an angry evil death claw remnant. I removed all the print supports, which is oddly satisfying. Sanded down all the edges that would be glued together with some 180 grid sanding paper. And I even cut in some lines using my box cutter to give the epoxy glue better grip. I believe I printed out all the parts at 0.3 millimeters. This way I could take advantage of all the print lines to give the clay better grip. I decided to go with the most common air drying clay. It's incredibly cheap and it's easy to work with. I had also printed out a smaller model. The first blade from Supernatural. I just love that show. Link in my description. This model would work as a test to try different approach approaches. I had also printed out this thing which I tested out different ways to prime the model for best grip. Sanding, mod podge, glue, primer. But it seems you don't need anything. It sticks on really good. And then it was time to begin. The first thing you do is to work a piece of clay in your hands. Get it soft and lenient. Then you can just start to stick it on the model. This first part almost feels like cheating. You just cover the whole model with a thin layer of clay, and then you smooth it out really good just using water and your hands. When the whole model is covered, the fun part starts, the modeling. I just added more clay in the places I wanted, and using some simple stencils, I printed in, pressed it into the shapes I wanted. And then you just smooth it out again, using water and your hands. And then you just keep repeating this process, and slowly keep building it up exactly like you want it. Once you're satisfied with how it looks, and it's time to really add some details, you can use this simple trick to add some texture. Get the whole model wet, and then cover pieces of it in a plastic bag, and then slowly pull it off again. This way you get some appropriate textures to work from. You really don't need to be very skilled with sculpting when you do it like this. It's almost the same way as when you use paints to weather and texture any other prop you've made. The next step was to add some holes, to make it look more like old smoldering bones. Again, just a simple technique to add some details. I kept it in places where it made sense to me, and of course, you can look up some pictures online to use as reference. The next step was to add some cracks. For this part I used the textures that was already there to build from. Some cracks I made small, and sometimes I put some more weight into it and really dug out a crack. And this again is a simple technique to do. All 
all the other parts was just really the same process. Just cover the model in a thin layer of clay, then smooth it out using water. Use a piece of a plastic bag, some baking paper, or just a wet paper towel to add some texture. Add some cracks using some sort of a stencil tool, or even just a simple pen. Add some more tiny holes where you think the bone would naturally start to decay. You can even add some more details after the clay has dried and fully cured. Just use a stencil or a sharp knife. In sculpting the horns I just used the same modeling process. Now I feel like the small wing parts of the horns, they're kind of the signature mark of this wasteland creature. So I tried to exaggerate those parts as much as I could. Once all the parts were done, it only took about a day for them to fully cure, and then I could finally glue them all together. I didn't want to glue the parts together in the beginning of the build, because in my experience so far, it's easier to manage all the parts this way. So I was super excited to see how it would look, and how big it was. It's actually the first time I've used this 5 minute epoxy glue in a build, and I can see why people use it in 3D printed parts. It works good. The model was looking great so far, so I couldn't wait to start weathering it with some paints. This is where the smaller first blade model came in handy. I used it to try out different ways of sealing the cured clay. I even tried out some car polish. But in the end, it was as simple as using some clear lacquer. It turned out a bit shiny, but otherwise really good. So now I could move on to the bigger model. It wasn't a difficult paint job, it was quite fun. I just used some watered down shades of brown acrylics. And you could tell right away the results of using clay. The details popped out immediately. And as long as you remember to seal the model first, you can play around with all kinds of colors for this part. And most importantly, you don't have to be a skilled painter to achieve this amazing look. I kept going with some simple shades of brown earthy colors. I watered down the paint quite a lot, then I brushed it out using a big soft pencil. And then I wiped most of it off again using a paper towel. Working in small areas like that, you just keep repeating it until you get the desired look you want. And the more times you work in the same area, the darker it will become, so be careful not to go too dark. You want to keep the contrasts. By the time I was done painting it, I did in fact go a bit too dark. And so I decided to go back and try the car polish again. Because I wanted the bone to be shiny in some places, and dark and dull in others. And so I applied some in different areas, using a rotary tool to buff it up. And that was in fact the last detail I did on this model. It was finally done. It was a really fun little project to work on, and I'm super happy with how it turned out. I especially love how you can combine this new technology with something old as clay sculpting. So I would highly recommend this method if you're looking to try out sculpting. It's a fun and easy way to get into it. And that was it. I hope you liked this video. If so, just click the like button, and I will try to share my next build. Thanks for watching.